Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. You know, for months now, way pre-COVID, we've been looking for a watch format for the cool stuff that we've been able to show you in some of the fitness health bands. And today, well, today I can show you something that does a really decent job working with ECGs, red dio technology for uh, blood oxygen, and of course, heart rate, blood pressure, and all of the other things too. It's called the W3, comes to us from Banggood. It's a bakey product, ECG plus HRV, heart rate variability, for doing your blood pressure, blood oxygen, and so forth. At a decent price too. A lot of folks prefer the watch format to the band format, so we're going to check out what this puppy can do. It's got Bluetooth version 4, works with Android 4, 4 and above, and so forth. Tethers to the H-Band app. We have lots of reviews on H-Band and H-Band 2. And uh, in the show notes, I'll have links to where we review that app in detail with other devices. So we're not going to go into a lot of depth here for what we've already done. Uh, just click on one of those and take you over there so you'll be seeing the uh, way the app works, but with a different uh, connected product. You've got app languages and you've got the uh, watch languages here that are available. And it does support the ECG plus HRV heart rate monitor. Now, a little word about that as you look at the other things it covers. When you combine um, the blood pulsing through your wrists, that's the PPG type of stuff, and the ECG type readings, the electrical, uh, you get a thing called a pulse wave transfer time, and that's a uh, something that you can use to help in computing a lot of these different measurements. Uh, heart rate variability is, of course, the change between uh, the pulses of your heart. How regular are they overall? And it's a measure of relaxation and stress as well. Okay, we got these different sensors in here. And uh, the screen's a 1.3 inch TFT 240 by 240, kind of basic. A 220 milliamp hour battery. You should be able to get 15 days of standby use and a full week of actually working with it. And of course, when you record ECG wave uh, data, it's going to stay on the watch itself until you transfer it over to the app. And in the app is where you'll get to see the full um, uh, details of your heart wave. Let's jump into this. We got the band or the device itself, the watch with a little cover on it that shows you a representative screen. It's uh, an interesting bezel with writing all around it. We presume at this point that that's the other electrode of the two that are on the back. Now, with a real watch like this, you see the metal there and it's not covered with plastic and you can actually, um, it's gonna make body contact. We've shown you quite a few th uh, bands uh, and, or watches that presume that they do ECG only to find out they tether to the Fundu app and it's all been simulated. And they, they got this whole thing covered in plastic on the back. Not so here. And even if it was, you'd want to remove it. Uh, definitely metal plates. We've got diodes in here, some of which are red, some are green. The charging port, one button that's going to cycle you through everything. And obviously, removable bands that they uh, give you here that are rubberized and uh, nice grooves on the back side, red stitching with black, so a bit of a sporty look and a dressy look as well. We'll put that together. A quality control check on here. And then the manual, which is in Chinese and English. Let's open it up to the English side so we can show you. Okay, it's a good color manual. I'm not sure if it goes across or down, so I'm just going to go down like this. If they're out of order, you'll be able to figure that out. It tells you about it, powering it on and off and charging it. The app functions and instructions it's getting into. So it looks like the app is down here, so it's probably going across the top. Anyway, here are um, ways that you can do the blood pressure. And next page, uh, the device structure and uh, where you're supposed to put it on your wrist so that you get the best readings. You want it above that little bump that you've got. So right up in here and not on it, not in front of it. Okay. Uh, some more details here. I'll just let you read that. You can freeze frame it and uh, 
read it at your leisure. Just page through so we can keep moving. More screens you're going to be seeing when we show you the watch. More info on the app. Uh, you can actually do uh, your sports activities and tie it in with your phone. Here we go, the sport mode, and then the QR code for iOS or Android that you can download. And of course, we review the, uh, the one in the Google Play Store. And there's a link to it in the show notes that you can uh, use to download the app itself as well. Okay, specifications, and that's pretty much it. I'll put it together, charge it up, and we'll keep moving. There. Oh, silly me. I didn't show you the uh, rest of the box. Inside here, we have the charger. And what kind have we got? Looks like a regular two-pin magnetic style. Yep. <laughs> there we go. And how is it? Okay, yeah, it can actually hold the watch. Uh, so, yeah, should be simple, easy charger, and it should stay in place when you're charging it. USB connector. Okay. Well, we get to our opening watch face, of course, by just pressing and holding. And this has been uh, connected with the tethering app and all updated and ready to go. You see how fast it turns off when you uh, when you touch the button. And if you have the twist your wrist to see the time, it'll light up. But again, it'll go off really quickly. So that's one of the things with this one. It uh, has a short time frame for brief a review of the data until you touch the screen. Then you can um, leave it, you, you can adjust it in the app to stay on, a, oh, I don't know, three seconds to 30 seconds, I think. See, if I do that, now I'm into a longer on time. <sighs> well, maybe <laughs> I gotta keep moving. Ah, okay. There's our step count for the day. Here's last night's sleep time, giving you uh, total time. Um, by the way, that was off a bit. We'll get back to that. Heart rate. Once I land on here now, when you get to a measuring uh, area, it stays on for a while while it actually gathers the data. So my heart rate kicked in pretty quickly and it seems to be pretty close to correct based on where I'm at right now. Blood pressure, same kind of thing. You switch to here, you're going to get your blood pressure reading. A nice thing is it is still showing the time of day. And sometimes I've been looking at a watch, been in a mode like this, and just wondering what the time is. Uh, it's just a nice touch there. Just switch to 746. You get your Bluetooth connection or not right here, which shows you if you're tethered to the app, which is a good thing too. Blood pressure takes a little while, but it did come in. Now I'm using a personal baseline. There's two different ways in the app that you can set it up for generic, meaning it's referenced on 120 over 80, or you can put in, if you're hypertensive, a personal setting. So I chose 130 over 85. And my readings coming in right here adjusted downward, apparently, and uh, downward here from that baseline. If I'd left the original baseline of what normal is for most everyone, then it would have uh, been significantly lower. So that's a really nice feature of the app itself. The H-Band app is the ability to put in personalized blood pressure readings from a known cuff and then you'll get a deviation from that. That's how this optical diode blood pressure calculation works. It's a deviation from a normal level. And if the normal is set for you, most likely the reading from the watch will be more accurate. Okay, blood oxygen coming in here. It's using the red diode, folks, which is the highest accuracy. When you can get a watch that uses red diodes for blood oxygen, that's a good thing. You see how it dropped as I moved it all around and then it went off and now it's all freaking out? That's because I jiggled it and it, it's not getting a good uh, connection at that point. But blood oxygen comes into play a lot with this one when you go into the scientific sleep. And all right, all right, we'll move on. You're getting into... Um, the, the long-term sleep uh, stuff and 
your uh, sleep apnea readings all come from that. You have limited capability. And look at that. It's just too darn fast for me. Or I'm getting too slow. I don't know. You have a ability to go into run, walk, indoor, outdoor, that kind of stuff. You notice there's just one button at the bottom. You cycle through all these things. A stair stepper, cycling, sedentary bikes, elliptical quite a few different things, rowing machine, and all of them back is at the top, press back, and I'm back to here. Now, all of them that involve some form of forward movement that will invoke the pedometer, like all of these different runs, even hiking, when you go into it, you get two pages of information, time, heart rate, calories burned, steps, miles, and your pace. And that's it. For all of them, for the ones that don't involve any kind of forward movement, which includes all of the other ones, like a stair stepper, outdoor cycling, stationary bike, elliptical, all of these, you only get one page, time, heart rate, and calories burned, and that's it. I'm not going to go into a lot on this on fitness because it's not really a fitness band. It's pretty much for um, all this other stuff. Now, ECG. I'm going to jump right into the app with you first for what you guys are interested in. I know, and that's the ECG. We'll get all this other data later, but for right now, I want to show you a couple of charts that I ran out here on ECG. The initial one setting this whole thing up, I didn't have it on the arm uh, really very well. So the chart that I got looks like this. And some of the reasons are because um, it was pretty dry on my wrist. The, my fingers were dry touching it. Every now and then I'd get a little bit of a good chart, you know, given from that P wave. But most of the time it was pretty noisy. So let me show you. Same basic time frame. Looking at just a little bit later, a few seconds later, running the chart again. This time we'll just do a playback for you. You can see that the waveform is much more consistent, much better formed, and gives us an overall better ECG uh, report directly. So make sure that you're wearing it properly on your arm. Uh, mine always is a little low, but there's that bump, sorry, the bump on your arm, and you want to have it above the bump. Make sure your arm is moist. Get some sweat from a water bottle or, or something and moisten your arm, both sides. Get those plates wet. Moisten your fingers when you touch the ring. All right, I'll show you. Let's stop out of here, get back out of here, and let's start testing. Now, it's pretty warm in here. Uh, <laughs> you guys know that sound. If you've watched some of my other ECG videos, it's me licking my fingers. Ooh, I know. Cooties. Uh, not COVID. Cooties. So uh, it's starting up and I'm holding the ring and it's testing and I should get a signal wave coming. And there you go. And it's uh, on this one, it's the real deal. I've showed you others that it's not been, it's been simulated, let me put it. If I mess around and move my fingers and do stuff, in a couple of seconds, you see it changes and it went flatline because it lost the connection. So this one is um, very accurate, as I can use that word accurate in terms that it's actually getting a one lead um, signal properly being sent by Bluetooth from the watch to the app and uh, representative information of the uh, heart rate as determined only by the ECG. Now the diodes are not on folks. You see that down there? No diodes. Um, you got a QT interval that, and see there, are, there's one I tilted it to show you. It's a few seconds delay before it gets over here and recorded. And then heart rate variability and these things are going out and then coming back as I settle down and what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I shouldn't talk and do this at the same time, but it's for demo purposes. So in the end, I'm going to get a heart rate, a QT interval, and an HRV. And when you do this on your own, 93%, uh, you're going to want to stay real still, seated, with your arms level, your elbows up, and uh, you can get yourself a nice chart that then you'll be able to send out. You can look at the ECG details here and 
basically I messed it up enough that it's not giving me anything uh, more than just the heart rate. And you could play it back. And again, you can expand the whole chart here if you want to and look at the whole thing like this. And you can send it out if you want to, whatever you want. So the ECG feature in the H-Band um, app is really, really sophisticated, no matter what watch or band that you're using. And this particular one, because it's in watch format, is really nice. All you have to do is touch the ring once you start it. We did it activating it directly from the uh, app which I recommend because this gets you the best overall instantaneous reading. Now, the bad news, and this is bad news for everyone that's using one of these, is when you do the ECG test on your arm in the past, and you see the little bar going across the bottom down there, it will do a 100-second test and you need to make a circuit. Now, I, I'm holding the button, but I can slide over here because all I really need to be doing is touching the ring, one finger, two fingers, whatever. The two plates on the bottom are making uh, one circuit uh, with a ground connection, and then my fingers are making the other one up here. And I'm getting a heart rate, and that heart rate is totally based on the electrical signal. The uh, diodes, neither the red or the green, are lit up underneath. However, um, when I get this thing done, it used to say to app, uh, you know, and you'd go over to the app and it would synchronize the ECG chart over to the app and you could look at it at your leisure. It doesn't do that anymore. It says test completed and it's done. Whatever it just did is lost. It's not apparently in the watch and it does not transfer to the app anymore. Not just this band or this watch, but all the other bands that we've reviewed that do ECG readings that use the H-Band app. Check it out. With the updated app, it will no longer transfer the ECG report to the, uh, to the phone, which is a big setback if you planned on um, doing uh, ECGs remotely. Um, Okay, no messages. That was my message section, long press. I had a few in there. I was going to show you some, but I don't have anything. Anyway, it shows you your messages in writing on the screen. Uh, back to the ECG. It really means that the only way you're going to be able to do your ECG report is tethered to the phone and starting it from the phone. You have a stopwatch countdown. There's your notifications we just looked at already. Find your phone when you're tethered. An overall brightness adjust for uh, here. And notice I'm on 01, the lowest setting. You can go all the way up to 12, and it's seriously bright. I only need it on one. Eh, make it three, I guess, for the video here. But you know, a good range for, uh, for that. Auto lock, I'm not sure what that does. I haven't really tried it. I think it locks the screen, so you have to use the button over here. Switch, when you tap on here, gets you uh, into all this stuff, your alarms, uh, whether you're disconnected or not, your uh, sedentary monitoring. These are toggle switches. There's your turn your wrist to see the time. These are all set in the app, but you can also turn them on and off right here on the watch itself, which is really, really handy. Blood oxygen monitoring, your blood oxygen alarm, that's the uh, sleep apnea at night. And then it circles through again all this stuff and you can just hit the, uh, the back button, of course, to get out of here. And you could clear your data as well. So that's everything in the more section. And then you have power off and your basic stuff down here. Um, it's uh, Bluetooth information and whatnot. And then here are your watch faces. Uh, and I can't really uh, change the f face. Oh, can I? Yes, I can. Okay, there you go. I keep forgetting which watch I'm on. There's another type of a face. Here's another one. There's a very large one. Now, these are just thumbnails, folks. I haven't brought them up full size. And that's the one that we were on. So let's take this one for a change. And there you go. You got your date, Bluetooth tethering, your step count, stuff like that. So you have a few. I don't think you can download any other ones, but uh, you've got those at least. 
All right, let's switch over and go deeper into the app now than just the ECG we took a look at. So even though we've reviewed the H-Band app and the H-Band 2 app quite a bit, I want to go through a little more again because it's been updated in a good way and a not so good way. First of all, there is no H-Band 2 app anymore. There's just H-Band from what I can tell going to the Google Play Store. Now, I really liked having H-Band and H-Band 2. There it's synchronizing again the data in the watch um, because they would work independently with each other and I could have one device tethered to one and one to the other. Now, with only one app, you can't do that um, so we've lost the, the capability of having the same basic foundational app available in, uh, in two different versions. As a result, since HBand 2 has been pulled from the Google Play Store, I'm going to put a, the latest version of it before it disappeared in the uh, Smartwatch Resource Center that we've got. Remember the address? It's in the show notes at the very bottom of every video um, if you lose it tinyurl.com slash Android watches. Okay, go over there. There's a bunch of different apps that aren't in the Play Store anymore, but are really cool, like that slider for the brightness that's uh, in there. And, and there will be a copy of HBand 2, the latest version before it was terminated and updated into this new version of just H-Band, which is what we have tethered to the watch right now. It's the W3, it's connected here. One thing you'll notice in the heart rate section, the chart's all different. You've got this little white thing going on down below, and I'm not sure what that is, if that's uh, your step count versus your heart rate. No indication what that is, I can't scroll it, but it is kind of cool and it's new. And it's showing up also, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it is in here as well. This is showing much more fine detail. It used to just be dots. Now you actually have movement and doggone, we still can't touch it and get an actual reading and we can't expand the chart. So there's more to go, but it is there. Also, they're now showing you what zone you're in and what time, how long you're in those zones, I guess on a daily basis from midnight to midnight. Um, this is a new addition, your max, minimum, and average. And then what you used to have, your heart rate details are still available and they're over here. And now what's really interesting is it's in, in a five minute increment and instead of every single minute, it's showing you every five minutes and the five readings in, in that five minute window are showing up right there. And if it was off your wrist, there's no reading. So I really like this. You can kind of see a five minute grouping of them and nail any particular reading if you're looking for it, like right here at 7, 10 a.m., 110, 102. Maybe I was in a dream there, I don't know. Well, maybe that would show up in the sleep analysis, which we'll get to in a second. So that's the uh, heart rate. Blood pressure hasn't changed much. This looks about the same. You got the systolic and diastolic chart going across. Can't do anything with it. Your lowest, your highest, the measured time window on all of that. It's uh, set up for taking a reading every five minutes. And there you go. Uh, you can't really do anything else with this other than I guess, see if it looks out of normal at any particular point, but it's oscillating for me back and forth around that uh, 130 over 85 level that I put in as a personal reading. Um, then you get to blood oxygen, and this is where it starts to get really fun. We've looked at this a lot. It's pretty much the same display. You've got your blood oxygen with the dots at the bottom representing when you were in sleep apnea. I had four of those. Uh, some other things I can show you. If I touch this, I got the actual chart now of the blood oxygen readings, and they are done in a 10-minute window. Notice that at 2.50 a.m., I had five sleep apnea events, and at 2.40, I had one or every 10 minutes, yeah. And, and, and so there was this window of time that I was getting quite a few. So it's not just taking one reading. It looks like it's taking quite a few if I got five separate sleep apnea events. 
going on right in that area there. Now here, I can touch the chart and I can get the actual time reading uh, display, but I can't expand the chart any. So it's a little tight, but you can read it. You got all of this stuff the same. We've covered all of that. Respiratory rate, hypoxia time. Here's where you turn on the ability for it to trigger the watch to vibrate and wake you up. And folks, it works. That's <laughs> so scary. It works. Three times now, three different nights, I have felt this thing vibrate and I have woken up realizing I'm not breathing. Oh my gosh. It's, it really is a scary feeling for me. Uh, but it's really happening. It's catching me in um, the apnea times. Now, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't remember it ringing four times. I remember once each night. So maybe it's picking a time and doing it if it hits a certain trigger. But it is working for me. And that's one of the main reasons I really like this thing is it can bring awareness to sleep apnea and give you some great, great detail on your resting heart um stuff, respiratory rate, cardiac load, whatnot. If nothing else to buy it for, uh, this would be a reason to have either this watch or one of the bands that do the same basic thing using the same basic um, app. But a lot of folks like a watch format. And so now we've got a really sweet watch format doing all of this. ECG, we uh, already did that. We already talked about that. And again, the only way you're going to get it is by starting a test from the app and triggering it in the watch and then holding the, uh, the, the, the proper points and letting it transfer it over. Again, it's not apparently allowing you to do the test on the watch without being tethered to the phone and capturing a waveform that you can transfer later. I hope that's just a glitch and they'll work it out. And if they do, I'll put it in the show notes that it's working again to take remote ECGs and, and, and tether them over, synchronize them, but it's not working uh, at this point, unfortunately. Heart rate variability, beautiful, beautiful stuff. You get the Lorenz scatter diagrams. You can get those day after day. Here's another one. You've got your whole chart here showing nighttime heart rate variability between midnight and 8 a.m. or whenever you wake up, whichever comes first. Here's an example of one that I got. I took the band off in uh, the middle of the night and just didn't want to wear it anymore. And so I got data up to that point and that's it. And I don't have a, a, a full on report because there wasn't enough information. When you hit the heart rate variability data, you get, of course, every reading, every 10 minutes of exactly what the HRV was. And if I do have an actual one, there, took a while to synchronize it, getting this from the cloud too. So your data is going up to the cloud. It's not all of this is not stored on the watch, but once it's downloaded, it's a uh, it's on the cloud too. Now I get the report. So you have all these different things. Five stars is the best. The number of stars does change. You can assess the shape of the um, display of the diagram, which is what this is all about. You're getting a 2D plot of something related to your heart uh, condition. And you can see if it looks like this or if it looks like this. Like mine looks, I think, looks kind of like a rocket turned the other way, right? So it is kind of like a comet. And comet is what you want. That's your basic normal uh, uh, reading. But if you're getting other things regularly like this rocket, it'll tell you a little bit about what that might mean. Not for you to self-diagnose, because this is not a diagnosis tool, but to share with medical professionals, your doctor or cardiologist, uh, of what you're getting night after night after night. You know, one night is probably, it could be anything, but if you're seeing the same kind of pattern repeatedly um, that looks like any of these, then it's probably worthwhile to contact a medical professional and bring this information to their attention so they can then intervene and take you to the next level of um, awareness for your own uh, physical condition. Uh, so as you go through, you can touch each of these, learn about them. And this has been updated a bit and consolidated to make it like a little more compact. You get your overall heart health index on a daily basis. So you can look at that figure here. I didn't get one because I didn't go all night there. 
And I'm usually about 75, plus or minus a little bit in the normal. You fall below 60, and then you got to be uh, careful. Okay, calendar here, sure. You get dots on the days that it has some data, so you can jump all around to any date that you want. Confirm that, and it'll take you right to that chart. Well done app. Really, really well done app. Now sleep. Here's the last night's sleep information as uh, recorded by the app uh, from 3.30 a.m. to 5.48 a.m. That is not correct. I had a lot longer sleep last night. Um, so let's go to a day. Okay, here's a better one to analyze. A little bit before midnight, up at about 6 a.m. I mean, right to the minute, though, is right there. I picked this one because it's showing a fairly poor sleep quality that uh, I, I need uh, some sleep optimization. So it's giving you a description of each of these stars and the breakdown. So uh, my waking up time throughout the night, 34 minutes, broken up into a couple of sections. And see if I touch there, it's going to show me the exact time. This is really well done. I'm very, very impressed now how this is going. I've got light sleep, deep sleep, rim sleep is the uh, magenta color one up here, and it shows you 416 to 425, little window of dream time there. Very nice. This is uh, has been and continues to be one of the best sleep apps out there in terms of everything it's collecting. When you factor in that not only do you have all this information stratified and accounted for for your actual sleeping, including how many awake times you had, your efficiency in falling asleep, and your overall sleep efficiency, you add to that the HRV stuff that we've got um, and the blood oxygen analysis, which uh, I mean, it's just amazing. So sports then is like um, your step count over time, and it's breaking that down, showing you when in a half hour window you took those steps. Um, and again, you can go to any day you want to on the calendar for that, and it's always keyed to be in today. Module Manager lets you adjust these, and I have. This is the order I like my stuff in. It won't be what you get when you get it out of the box, but if you want sports before sleep, just simply do that. Hit your check mark, and now your modules have reversed themselves. Any questions? Okay. Remember all this, it'll be a test. <laughs> Running. Here's where you can do a GPS movement connection um, with this app and the band. And you can initiate it from here using GPS movement calculated from the GPS module in the phone. There is no GPS in the band. If you want the smartwatch movement, you can come over here and uh, it'll show you your records of when you were using this remotely by itself, I presume. Um, and I've got a few things in here, it looks like, from way back in 2019 because it all goes up to the cloud and I have an account set up that I log in on. Um, again, with the app, you can log in anonymously uh, or you can log in with an account that you set up if you want to see your historical data over time. So you got that on the second tab and then here is all your stuff. This is all about you, your height, weight, all that kind of stuff. This is all about the device. You have overall help, uh, goals, your unit settings, metric or imperial, changing the theme is uh, is changing the watch face on here, I believe. And you're about us, uh, which shows you the version we're running, 5.1.9, the latest updated version uh, of H-Band from the Google Play Store right now. I show that because it's constantly being updated. So if you go in and say, mine doesn't look like yours, check the version number. You may have a newer one. It will be a much older version of the H-Band 2 that I'm putting in our uh, resource center for you to use. And you may like that for whatever reason, better than the newer ones. Um, so it'll be available for you. This watch and all of these watches and bands that run with H-Band work with either H-Band or H-Band 2. Both apps work. And we run as what you can connect to, not Strava, not Google Fit, uh, not Runtastic, but we run um, if you want to connect. And of course, you can log out from here. When you go in here, these are all the different things related to the band that you can set up your heart rate, turn your wrist, and you saw the triggers, the on-off switches are in the watch as well. Here's that 
blood pressure private area that you can set up to tailor it to your own typical heart rate or blood pressure as measured by a cuff. And I highly encourage you to do that if you want to increase the likelihood of accuracy when you take the measurements with a, uh, a diode uh, style of, of reading. Um, low power mode, this will reduce all these different things uh, when the, the battery starts to run down on the watch to try to save it. There's your screen on time. You have from five seconds, they say, three seconds, all the way up to 30 seconds. I can confirm it. I can save it. And now, theoretically, I'm going to see if it works. Once I get past there, it's supposed to now stay on for 30 seconds. Let's see while we're doing this. Uh, take a photo, countdown timer, all these things are kind of basic. Here's the firmware version. You can check for uh, updates, and then you can clear the data. Look, it's working. Dang, I could, I could have set that all up. Yeah, I thought I had it on 30 seconds, but I had it on 5, which is why it was timing out. Well, you know me. I'll talk as long as the watch is on, so I guess it was good that it was lower. That's it for there. That's it for there. We did that. We've done dashboard. We touch here and you get into nothing. Okay. I guess that's because it's down here in sport is where you get into 303 maximum steps at one time of the 648 total. You can send things out from here. You can get into this, which we haven't even looked at weekly, monthly, and yearly, and these are the days I've used it. So this was my step count, my sleep info, my heart rate, and blood pressure averages, daily averages over a week, or weekly averages over a month, or yearly averages over a bunch of years. Uh, sweet that it's doing that in the background. Now this last part, this last part I consider the most important aspect of this app and watch combination. And it is so valuable that the clip you're about to see, I'm extracting from this video and I'm going to post it standalone for anybody whose family member may have contracted COVID-19 and needs a remote monitoring capability. Once they're tethered together, You'll see the uh, band appear here, and there's a more button right beside it. Now, the device itself can just actually be on a person's arm and doesn't even need to be showing the display. It can go off. What you do is you tap the more button here, and you get a selection of items across the bottom. Remotely, as long as you're within Bluetooth range, you could be in a room outside of a isolated um, COVID environment where your loved one is working through the virus before um, getting serious enough, hopefully not having to go into emergency. To get a reading of the basic vitals on this device, if they're just wearing it, all you got to do is tap a button, start it from right here. Now, instantly, it turned the watch into a heart rate monitor. It's going to be monitoring blood uh, be beats per minute, heart rate, and we'll do this continuously on uh, your phone so you can see exactly how the heart rate is working. When you finish that, you can back out of here, hit more, do the same thing for blood pressure. Now, you see normal and personal. Uh, you'll learn in the full review about this watch that you can set up your own specific normal blood pressure. If you're hypertensive, you wear a cuff, and your readings are typically 130 over 85, for example, you can enter that in the personal area. And then when it actually monitors your uh, blood pressure, Again, you won't see it on the watch. It won't vibrate. It won't uh, light up. It won't do anything. Only if it's twisted in the right way, the time will come on. And you can even turn that feature off. But as it goes through assessing the blood pressure over about a minute or so, it will then give you the reading on the screen on the watch remotely outside of the room. You can either re accept it or reject it. And if you say yes, that blood pressure blood pressure reading is now recorded into the phone that you can review later. Okay, that's blood pressure. And then, really important one, is blood oxygen. 
This is the one that tells you the saturation of oxygen in the blood, and it's the critical one, if there's difficulty breathing, that needs to be monitored so it doesn't fall too low. Too low of a blood oxygen can create some serious health problems. Now, an interesting factor about blood oxygen, it can be read with the green diodes that typically you use for heart rate and, uh, and blood pressure, but a very sophisticated device will use red diodes like this one. The red diodes penetrate the skin in a way that gets a better reading overall for blood oxygen. Now, since I messed around with it and lifted it, you see it's bouncing all over the place. If I were quiet and still, this would normalize and come back to a, uh, a regular level that you're being able to monitor continuously on your phone or any phone, your old phone, use your phone for regular stuff and take last year's phone if you still got it, connect it up with this app. And you could just have this mounted on the wall outside the door if you wanted to, to the bedroom that has a person who's uh, working through the virus. All of that stuff is available. There's other things here. Uh, this is ECG, but it doesn't really, uh, you can try it, uh, but it requires the person to actually touch the ring during the testing in order to get an electrical signal for you to get a heart wave chart here. But it's something that you can also do on here. You just press the start button, you grab the ring, you make sure that the skin is moist, and in a moment you'll start to see a chart appear on here, remotely transmitted by Bluetooth, which is really, really cool. There you go. So, the app is called H-Band. It's a free app. You download. It tethers to the Bakey W3. You tap the More button once they're connected, and you can initiate any of these uh, tests remotely without even touching the watch itself. So you may be wondering about the accuracy of this device. I mean, after all, it is an inexpensive, wearable smartwatch with some measuring capabilities in it. Well, it have not been verified. To be honest with you, I really wouldn't trust the blood pressure readings. They're something you should check for sure to see how they correlate with your, uh, your calibrated cuff or your doctor's reading. As far as heart rate goes, pulse, that's pretty close to those little oximeter things that you can get at the drugstore and put on your finger and see your pulse. The blood oxygen, have a pretty good feel about that one because it's using that red diode like I talked about. So monitor this, but again, use it only for guidance, okay? It's just to give you a little bit of information, but don't trust it totally that it's accurate. Look at other factors to determine whether or not there's over-reporting or under-reporting by any of the measurements coming from this device. So accuracy is questionable, but it does provide you some metrics that may guide you to get more accurate measurements from a trained professional. And that's the updated H-Band app. And um, Again, we've got a variety of different watch faces here, and as I allow it to sit on a particular one, it, uh, it, it will time out at the time that you put in it. And uh, this is the W3 band itself. It's got nice leather stitched with red uh, belt on it that's removable, changeable. I'm sorry, I don't know the dimensions right now. It should be in the specs. I'm guessing 22 or maybe 20. Um, yeah, all in all, a really nice watch, and it's coming to us from Banggood. These guys are on top of it when it comes to health-related uh, devices, watches, bands, and everything else, especially the ECG and the sleep apnea, the really advanced stuff. So I'm really, really happy to be working with Banggood, and uh, we'll continue doing that if you help us out too. If you like this one, please check the show notes for the, the buying link and pick it up using that link, and we'll try to get you a discount coupon if possible on, uh, on the unit as well. Well, extensive review today. A lot coming. Uh, there's a few more coming in uh, doing all this type of stuff and more. So uh, stay tuned. Stay subscribed. We'll see you again soon.